we continue with our discussion on how to benefit from personal experiences. That is, engaging the force of experience to make your 2022 better. And I think we have devoted last month and this month to look at this. By the grace of God, in March, we'll be looking at something else. But you see, what is painful sometimes is that upon all that we teach, upon all that we pray, in this church, it saddens to still see and get to hear that some people are running businesses and they are still not making it. You see, the truth of the matter is that it is not just coming to attend that will determine what you get. It is what we, you do with what you get to hear. There are many of us that are forgetful hearers. So it's even worse than you not listening at all. And it is not what you know that will make you. It is what you do with what you know that will make you. I run business, or let me say I run businesses. I can tell you, making it in business in Nigeria is critical. You don't just wake up and say you want to do any business. You come back regretting. It is not only prayers that make business to thrive. It is a combination of factors. If you pray and you do not deploy other factors, your prayers will come back to you unanswered. It is not only yoke breaking that makes business work. It's a combination of factors which include yoke breaking, which includes prayers. But if you fail to do all these little, little things that we teach, you can't make it. It's not a cause. It is not the devil that is making business not to work. If you are engaged in a wrong business, there is no prayer that will make that business work. I give you a typical example, and I'm sorry to say, maybe some of us are still engaged in such. You are into a provision business. You can never break even, except you have very huge capital. You look at the supermarket, and that's why you see they are always big. Always big. Why? The margin on the business is so insignificant. So when you get to a supermarket, you will see that they have ample parking space and they have varieties. Varieties. So it is either that somebody is buying biscuit or somebody is buying Indomie or somebody is buying Maggi or somebody is buying Bambamita or somebody is buying water or somebody is buying something at any point in time. Anytime. In fact, there is a supermarket not too far from our estate. If you get there this time, you will meet people. And one of the things that the owner of that particular supermarket has done, strategically to the best of my knowledge, was to attach the pharmaceutical and other uh, 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 provisions. He marked them together so that as you are coming, you are buying cream. As you are coming, you are buying drugs. As you are coming, you are buying biscuits. As you are coming, you are buying milk. As you are coming, at any point in time, there is something that somebody is buying. At any point in time, there is something that somebody is buying. Before, what did he do? The, the, the cosmetics, they are in one department. Then, the pharmaceutical, in fact, on another floor entirely. But what did the man do? He marked everything together. So that when you come, even things that you do not need, things you did not plan as at the time you are coming into the supermarket, you also see. So long as you can afford it, what do you do? You buy. Because again, when you enter into a supermarket, 
This one begins to do in my village a language, begins to do kami, 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 kami. And that is why these days I rarely go to supermarket. I wanted to buy cream. Michelle was around. I said, Michelle help me buy. And I was wife for a long time. I didn't have an ATM. So when I didn't have an ATM, there was no need for me entering into any supermarket. So the other time that um, uh, Madame was going, I said, please help me buy toothpaste. But what I used to do was to go to the supermarket and buy like 24 pieces of toothpaste. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> when they expire, because this room we use, this way we use, how I will use. Even when visitor will come, say, we use. You get the point? So I put one in my apartment in the bathroom. I put one in the bathroom. Yeah, we share in all the rooms, including the guest room. But these days, I, when I will not even go to the supermarket, so nothing is doing me coming, coming, coming. So now you cannot imagine you having small money not to afford you the opportunity of buying varieties. Maybe you getting a small store that is not big enough to even accommodate so many items. You want to go into provision store. At the end of the day, you will pray. The prayer will not answer. Because this person will come and then the person will say, I need it. You don't have it. We go to where they can get why is it like that? Because we come, there are all these things that we learn, that we talk about, but people don't even afford themselves the opportunity. They either will not come, or they come, they will not learn. At least I was seen. And it starts and ends that way. May God help us this year in Jesus' name. Greatness is not going to come easy. Greatness is never going to come easy. I told you last week. Arrival of new things will never come easy. You have to make conscious efforts. Added to your prayers. Added to your fasting. Added to oh, so many other things you will do. So how to benefit from your personal experiences? Please note. That every event, I think I've told you this, how many times now in the course of this discussion, that every event of your life is a communication to you. The good times, communication. The bad times, communication. Disappointments, communication. Communication. Every event of your life, when you are loved, communication. When you are hated, communication. Nobody hates somebody for no just reason, except somebody that has been sent by the devil. So hatred is always attached to something negative that somebody has done. It's in response. In life, there is always action, the law of action and reaction. If I'm not mistaken, that should be the third law of motion. To so every action, there is always equal and opposite reaction. In 2021, life was not good for you. Why was life not good for you? So you sit down. If you sit down, you will see the reasons why life is not good for you. But unfortunately, those things you did in 2021 that didn't fetch, that didn't allow you to make success out of life, you are still doing it in 2022. And you are saying it is for me a feast of new things and harvest of great things. It all it's a fake, vague confession that will never come to pass. That is not how the word of prophecies do come to pass. Get this reality. Somebody shout hallelujah. Telling that maybe you are not doing things well. That is the way it works. Events of your life will either tell you that maybe there are things you are not doing well. So at that, adjust your ways. Maybe you are just moving with the wrong people. Then break the relationship. 
Even if the person is your brother, break it. Even if the fellow is your sister, break it. Don't have any, too, I mean, too much, too much attachment to anybody's soul that you cannot break. The moment you do that, you are dead. Any money loan, Shani? Any money loan, Shani? Oh. We sang that in our Sunday church back in days. Aye, look, aye, ni mole. Or aye, tutu, tutu. Your enemies are people that know you. People that you know. If somebody wants to destroy your destiny, it can never be somebody that doesn't know you. There is a limit to what somebody that does not know you can do against you. Don't create any special attachment with anybody such that you cannot break away. Or a man, daughter... So when you are in relationship with somebody, I don't know how to say it in English. Look for an interpreter. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, now what am I saying? You have a friend. He disappointed you. You have a friend. She disappointed you. What will that teach you about your experience about people? That you should just be careful. It, it, it's not going to teach you that you shouldn't relate with people anymore. But it is only teaching you that you should be mindful, you should be careful the way you relate with who? With people, including church people. And like I do say, church people are one of the wicked in July. Church people, whether witches are there now in our midst, who knows? Somebody shout hallelujah. Events of your life may be telling you that you are too hard. Calm down. Like Shelly will always tell me, Daddy, calm down. Events of your life may, be also, may also be telling you that you are too soft. There are people that are too soft. Do you know what I found out? If you are too soft, you cannot move forward in life. You see, to really make it in life, you need a measure of being hard. You are not that soft because it takes you being hard to take things out of the life, out of life. You cannot afford to be gentle. So if you see, you just look. Let me tell you, did you buy? That is what events of your life will be telling you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes maybe you talk too much. Or that you talk too much about yourself to people. Like me. Typically, the reason why I'm still standing is just by grace. If I know you today, I will almost tell you everything about me. That's the way these things work. Experiences. If, for example, now you told uh, somebody, something, and you get to hear, and you know from another fellow, but you know by the time you are hearing, they will either have added to what you told or subtracted from it. What does that tell you? There are certain things you don't know about yourself. You keep within you till you die. There are things you just know and keep. Particularly when you are making success. What betrays you when you go to tell the secret of your success to people? What is the mistake that I do make? Ah, this business that I do, very profitable. The people you are telling, do you know what you are doing? Not even competitor. The competitor is part of it. But somebody will not, okay, maybe this business can fetch you. The day that... Uh, you yourself, you are still looking for money to buy a receipt. The person will come, come and borrow me five million naira. Do you have the five million naira in your account? But he doesn't know, or she doesn't know. But you have told him that this business is profitable. So events of your life may tell you that you are talking too much. 
It might also be telling you maybe you are too close-mouthed. In some cases, it might be that you are running too fast than God. Events of your life might just be telling you, calm down, move slowly, relax, particularly if you are sick. I don't believe that the devil can inflict a Christian with sickness. But if God allows that to happen to a Christian, it only means that God is telling the Christian, the way you are living your life, adjust. You are working too much. Relax. Leave everything for me to handle. Maybe you are also too slow. Events of your life will tell you so. Maybe you, too, you sleep too much. Maybe you are too lazy. Maybe you are reckless. For example, money gets to your hand. And you find out that you are always broke. Always broke. Always broke. What is that telling you? You are reckless with spending. Reckless with spending. Sometimes I can keep 10,000 naira in my pocket and it will be there for a whole week. Why? I live alone in Ibadan. I know where they sell Amala. I know it yard, I know it yard, I know it on street. I know I'm Alaskai. But you know what I encourage myself in? There is nothing that is special in all those Amala. I've tasted them. There is nothing. So when I'm leaving Lagos, what do I do? I pack my things, the soup they pack for me, and I live within the limit of things that they pack for me till I return. So every 10 couple that I have, as a matter of fact, the last bag, uh, just small, maybe one quarter bag of rice that I bought, bas basmati, I just found out that two weeks ago, started having weevils. Weevils. So what did I do? I gave it to the security guard, but I warned him, make sure that you dry it, and then you remove the weevils. Otherwise, you eat rice. It will. You get the point? Now, I have rice, I have gari, I have things that I need, basically. And incidentally, when I'm even traveling, my wife will even give me what I don't need. For example, you are packing moi moi in Sachi. You are also packing moi moi in, in leaves. Now, I will eat on Monday quite well. I will eat on Tuesday quite well. I will eat on Wednesday quite well. But Thursday, I will not eat. So she gives you more than you need. Such that often, when I'm returning, instead of bringing those things back to Lagos, I just give to the security guards. And that will not now allow me to say I'm going to Iyaupe or going to I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't pride myself. I can afford any restaurant. But do I need those food? Significantly, no. So what does that do for me? It keeps my money in my pocket. It keeps my money in my pocket. But there are some people like that. They are married. And some of you that are listening to me now, you are married. Instead of keeping the money in the home, give it to your wife. Nalayo, all the restaurants in Lagos, you know. You will never be rich. That's the gospel truth. Even if you are going to work in the, in the morning, let your wife pack basket for you. Carry go. Don't say in the, in the, in the during break hour, you want to go and eat with... No! You don't need it. Back in days, I know one guy that was working with, with uh, Abacus. You know what the guy told me? He said by 6 o'clock, he was already eating Eba. That is what he eats every morning. 6 o'clock, he was already eating Eba. As soon as he was done eating Eba, he goes to the office. Until he returns in the evening, nothing. So the money will remain in his pocket. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
When you are talking to people that will be able to save money, you know. When you are also talking with people that are frivolous with money, you also do what? You know, it's as simple as that. So as I'm talking now, you know yourself. Allah, my care. How often do you eat at all? There are some that are coming back home in the evening. What is your lot eater? So whatsoever the woman has to give them at home is neither here nor what? Not there. They are already filled up. Somebody shout hallelujah. So event, when you now find out that the money you are keeping is always missing. The money is not always there. Sit down. I give you a typical example. Now, if I tell you now this shoe that I'm wearing, the price is below my standard. But if I do not tell you the price of this shoe, you will never know. Why? Because I have carried my standard leg to wear a substandard shoe. So the value that you are, you are adding, you are attaching to this shoe is the value that you attach to me. Somebody shout hallelujah. I got connected to the manufacturer in Turkey online. And he said I should buy 10 pairs for 170,000 naira, Which means this shoe is 17,000 naira. There are, there, are, there are, is that what? Shipping. With the shipping, it's about 21,000 naira. And he brought the 10 and I said, some of them below my standard. Oh yeah, Shagun, take. Oh yeah, you, Fauci, Pessy, take. Oh yeah, you. I even gave two to your me to share in the church. But I was able to bring three. I wore one on Thursday. I'm very sure you'll be looking at me. Ah, but I... As this shoe is now, I can wear it to go and meet the president. But do you know that I have shoe in my wardrobe, I'm sorry to say, that I bought back then, 1,000 pounds, not dollars. 1,200 pounds. I will still be wearing them. I will also be wearing this one to confuse the devil. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Simple. It, eh? And the look man's and the look woman's. That's the way these are the things to do. When you find out that why is your money always going? All right, you have to you have to you have to sit down and and look at that is the experiences. If you are always broke, 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 God is talking to you. That being broke is a communication. In summary, whatever you are seeing as experiences are lessons to lead you to a few things. I will share one today. If we can share two, we share. But I'm not going to talk about this in March. We lead you to one, wisdom. Experiences of your life teaching you lessons should teach you wisdom or more wisdom if you are already wise. But definitely experiences of your life will not lead you to further foolishness. It's not possible. Except if you are not learning from the experiences. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. So if you know and you do not apply the knowledge of what you know. You are not wise. You are what? You are not wise. Therefore, you are what? Use your mouth to say it. Now you talk, I'm not be me. So there are so many foolish people in the church. I'm sorry to say. Extremely foolish people. Extremely foolish people. Very foolish. I was discussing with somebody in the course of the week. He said, she's very broke now. I said, what do you do with your money? 
and he's raising money or he wants to go and further his studies overseas. It doesn't happen. Do you know what he told me? He said, he told me that this was the amount he was saving before. But now, he doesn't have anything anymore. I said, what have you been doing with your money? He said, he's giving everything to church. I said, that is why you are broke. Somebody shout hallelujah. People see, there are, there, are, there are sowing you do in the church that is a foolish sowing. Foolish sowing. See, 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 when I sow, I get back. But there are churches that I do attend. When I sow, things become hard. I don't sow there anymore. If you sow in this church, and it doesn't come back to you. Don't sow again. I know what I'm saying. God is not a user. Don't be foolish. So wisdom is a process whereby you deploy your experiences to make your life become what? Better. That's wisdom. Nothing more. Why do I give? Because by experiences, I can tell that when I give, God blesses me. By experience. I say, by experience, I've come to know that the secret of my life is to be active in the church environment. By experience. By experience, I know that there are two women in my life I don't want to offend. One, my mother. The second one, my wife. I want to take care of them with the highest possible capacity that I have. By experience, I know. Somebody shout hallelujah. By experience. But you just get married. You relate with your wife anyhow. You have ten couple. You are hiding it from the woman. So you have not taken your time to study. If I'm releasing ten couple to the life of anybody, if things, if now you, I give you ten naira, and things becomes difficult for me. When you come next time and say you need two naira, I won't give you. I will try it number number one time. I will try you number two. When I try number three, I will say, ah, this is not a fruitful vine. Next time you come, I won't give you. There is somebody, if I mention, your me with no root, we know, who again we know, maybe Reverend Aruna, we know Reverend Ludele, I know. We are such close. But I found out that anytime I give her something, she's a woman. We are even supposed to, she is even supposed to be a member of this church. We started more or less the planning of this church together. But I discovered that when I released this one, I'm broke. I fixed the Audi Q7. She called me, she said she has got somebody, I should come and discuss with somebody in her house right away. I carried the motor. I just took it from Panamita. I carried the vehicle. I went to her house. And I was to come to church from there. We're still in Fagba. And on my way, as I just drove off a house, it was only God that saved me. The vehicle that came from Panabita should have returned back to Panabita. And I sat down and I looked at things back. What did I do? We are friends. We talk. We exchange greetings. But it starts and ends at that. No matter what she needs. I won't let, let take it by door of one. God provide for you. I'm not joking. It's not laughing matter. Somebody shout hallelujah. Who is a fool? A fool is that fellow who never learns from the experiences of his own life, of our own life, or the experiences of the life of others. So something is happening to you or in your life, instead of you sitting down to think, all you do is cry. Shakun, you're not very result, Wani. 
You become depressed. Is it the depression that will no? When something is not working well in your life, sit down and think. Why are things not working for me? Why are things not working with me? I told you yesterday, I said I'm operating at a subsistence level. Or was it yesterday or in the course of last week? I said, this is this business, this is this business. But as I'm talking to you now, I know what the issues are. And I know how to tackle the issue. Why? Because I sat down, I did not allow that to depress me. Or begin to see, and that is why when somebody t- uh, is crying and I'm looking, it doesn't move me. Cry over from t- today or t- tomorrow. How come I will on Shele itself? And you see people that don't think, they are the ones that cry easily. If you see anybody that, any little, ah, 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 is a lie. The person doesn't think. When you apply wisdom, you find out that there is no challenge that we see as too big that you cannot surmount. When tribulations come, instead of you sitting down to communicate with God, all you are doing is looking for prophets or seers that will tell you what the issues are. No. He says, come, let us do what? Reason together. Deca Joshua, Asoye Paul, Abika Joronu Paul. Reason. Think. That's the way life is. And then whatsoever you are able to arrive at, deploy it to make your life better. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5. I'm not going to read it, but it's about wisdom. In verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all you're getting. Get understanding. So wisdom is you making use of your past to guide your present into your future. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. Now, most women will find, for those that are mothers, you will agree with me that when you had your first child, it was very, very hectic. Very hectic. But by the time the second pregnancy will come, with the experience of the first one, you are able to navigate through. Do you know that it got to a level in the life of my mother? She was the one that put herself to bed. She took delivery of herself. Her second to the last child. Because she found herself incidentally and unfortunately in a home where she was not loved. My mother locked herself in the room. She locked herself up in the room. Pregnant. By the time she will come out, she has already put to bed. And she laid the baby on the bed to go and bury the... uh, and all those things. That was when people knew that she put to bed. Would that be possible if that was her first pregnancy? No. She had had the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So she knew the process. She was guided by her experience. You will agree with me when you began to drive. Don't do bash very good here and there. Do you see bash? Why? You have learned by what? By experience. You know when to speed. You know when not to speed. When somebody begins to drive, everything speed in here. And basically, they accelerate up. And you pay more to your fly alone. And before you say that crop being seen, what the heat, what the bash, what the heat, what the, what the book are that. Some people want to get that. got that. The gutter that is in front of the house. So what do that see? I see what did you do. For example, you are looking for a place. For me, for example, now, when we were coming to Agege, I didn't know here before. The first visit, the second visit, I couldn't come here alone. As a matter of fact, the third visit, the fourth visit, I have to be using Google Map. Am I still using Google Map now? Why? I can even describe the place to people. That is the way this thing works. Wisdom is applicable in every area of life. In relationship, sit down. Ask yourself, why am I finding it difficult with this, my boss? Why is there no peace in my home? Why is my husband not in love with me? 
Why is my wife not in love with me? Why are my kids not doing well? Why can't I keep friends? Why? Deploy it to your business. Why am I always losing money? Most times you will think it's a spiritual attack. For goodness sake, if you go to a prophet, they will tell you it's a spiritual attack. Forget about it. Spiritual attack of a Christian. That's the gospel truth. How can the devil attack a Christian? How now? At any point in time, devils, as we are in the church now, devils abound. What is, tempta what is temptation? Temptation is when the devil comes to you making a suggestion. You are a student. During exam, the devil will be tempting you. Ask that, ask that person. You get the point? Now, what is attack? Attack is that you have yielded to the temptation. You are now being caught. They now drive you out of the class. When you are driven out of the class, what has happened to you? Fail. Failure. So we must understand the devil never attacked Jesus. The devil tempted Jesus. And there's no way the devil would be able to attack Jesus. Can you attack somebody that is higher than you? What is temptation? Just somebody making a suggestion. Somebody asking you a question. That is temptation. A suggestion. As a matter of fact, he came. He tempted Adam and Eve the same way he tempted Jesus. But they said yes. And then what happened to them? They were attacked. Attack is a suffering. It's like you have an accident. That is not your portion in Jesus' name. So why are you always losing money? Can't I make profit? These are the things you need to significantly learn. That is wisdom. What is the highest? See, some of us, we go into business without asking. This business, what is the highest level I can ever get to? Ola will come to tell me. This is the number of birds. This is the number of eggs. This is the number we can produce per day. This is the number we are producing now. And then when we continue, this is the highest, this is the number we can get to. But you are going into a business, you never bothered. You are never bothered. You just want to go and do business just for the sake of doing a business. And that is why people lose money. If you want to do a business, how do you go about it? Look for other people that are doing that kind of business. How far are they going? Most people go to do business and what to get uh, is subsistence income. Income that is just enough for you to feed. Sometimes, even, even the income to feed self, you are not able to get it from the business. Why are you in it? And you are now praying. Praying for what? If you are in a business that is already restricted and limited, prayer will not expand it. That's the way these things work. You don't deploy these basic things in what you do. Unfortunately, just waste your prayers. Waste your fasting. Waste the reading of the Bible. You are having low patronage. Why? Are you not too harsh? Are you not the one scaring away people? Simple. By the way you respond, I look at our sales in January and I said, go and give social value to this person. Go and give social value to this person. Am I a fool? And when the two of them responded, they said, nobody has ever done this for us before. The other man said, ah, I've just started doing business with you people. These are the things, the application of wisdom. When you are doing your own, it's a lie. There are things that you must sell. Now, if you know you sell, you cannot afford to be living like me. I'm an extremely indoor person. I don't go out. 
But if what you said, the nature of the business you do, is such that, okay, you sell clothes, and you want people to be buying clothes from you, and you are now an indoor person like me, Talawa. Somebody has approached you about that show, and you are the one that has given them the. When they are doing the event, you say you are busy, you didn't go. Next time, nobody will call you. But you will buy the attire, you go there, tie your gilly, and you go to. And they are happy seeing you as an employee. You apply wisdom. How can I be promoted? See, do you know that sometimes lack of promotion in that place is a communication to you that you don't belong there? But instead of you to take it as a challenge and leave and look for something else to do, you are there one year, you are there a second and then all you are doing is that this boss that is hating me, fall down, die, fall down, die. The question you should ask yourself is that if they even take the boss away to bring another boss, are they going to replace you with him? If the answer is no, who says that the boss they will bring will not hate you more than the previous one? Which means another person will have to die. In that organization, people will now continue to die, die. That is why some of the further and prayers for that, that prayer that you pray, God is not assenting to it because you are the one that has prayed. Sometimes you just need to change your profession. If the profession, see, somebody shout hallelujah. That is why I, I always talk about the media. I know how the media works. I've been there over 20 years. But the media will only fetch you money when others have money. And when organizations are looking for what budget to cut, which budget will they call first? I've run that party for three years. Have I done advert once? Am I not selling? So those of us that are in the media, I was telling your media the other time. I said, I said this organization, the number of customers, let us say the highest circulated newspaper, in Nigeria, let us assume that they circulate a hundred thousand, which is not possible. You get the point? And first man now goes to advertise there. Do you know that if first man just goes on their platform and advertise the same product, which one will have the higher reach? Eh? So at the end of the day, that is why those corporate communication people, they treat you people in marketing as if they are doing you people. No, so. Let your experience guide you. Let it guide you. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is not what you know that will lead you to your next level. It is what you do with what you know. Which suggests that before you take any action, sit down and think. Will you carry your number out so that you go and fight another nation without sitting down to ask yourself? Don't just be dumping, gallivanting here and there. Okay, Femi, you sell keyboard. The question that you should ask yourself is that keyboard may no no later. No, you come. You get my point? Ah, you don't ask yourself. This keyboard, okay, in our church now, we bought two keyboards. With the one upstairs, we have three. This one, when was the last, when did we buy it? This one, when did we buy it? Or you know, Femi, when do you think in this church we'll be needing another keyboard? So if you are a keyboard supplier potentially to our church, when will it come that you will be able to assess income from this our big church? Are you see? That is the way to run. That is the way to run.